People always ask me, Ty, how do I get my diet on track? How do I get a six pack? Ty, how do I get my first double under? Ty, how do I get a muscle up? And my response is always usually the same. You need to commit more to your diet, your double under progression. You can't even do a fucking pull up. So what do you makes you think you can do a There's one major thing that all these different items have in common, and that's willpower. Having the will to commit to something strenuous, long, lengthy, without much progression slash achievement for a long period of time to achieve a result that you desire. Now, there's one main point that all those things have in common, and that is willpower. Willpower is the metaphorical muscle of your mind. And just like your body, we need to train it. Yet the general population don't understand the basics of willpower and how to train the mind. And you might be thinking, this cunt's just fucking full of shit. But listen, Every day we make decisions. A lot of fucking decisions. I'm talking 35,000 decisions on estimate a day. 225 of these decisions are purely on food. So the rest of your decisions are just, you know, should I turn left? Should I turn right? Should I put my hand up here? Should I scratch my head? Etc. We all make fucking tons of decisions. Let's say your goal is to get a six pack. It's a fucking stupid goal if you ask me, but let's just say it is for this for this hypothetical. Oh, but Ty, you have a six pack. If you saw how much and what I eat on a daily basis, you'd be scratching your head. Karen, abs are made in the kitchen. They're not made in the gym. I have a 460 day streak on my fitness pal. Any of this sound appealing at all to you? Anyway, for purposes sake, your goal is to get a six pack. Let's say our digital currency for our willpower is $100. Now you're eating 1600 calories a day. You're probably spending most of your money or your currency on trying to stick to your calories, to eat healthy, and to make sure you don't snack or binge during the day on temptation. It gets to dinner time and your family wants to go to dinner, they want to have some Maccas. How do you expect yourself to get the salad yet again when Tim over there, the anorexic cunt, is eating a double Big Mac with fries, a Coke, fucking chick 24 chicken nuggets and a McFlurry? Mm-mm-mm, that salad sounds yummy. It's just not gonna fucking happen. Look, I get it. There's 1% of people out there that just have incredible willpower and I put myself in that group. You can beg to differ, but I put myself in that group. And that very small percentage of people will be like, look, Tim, I'm on a fucking diet. Get your greasy chicken nuggets away from me and let me eat my salad in peace. But for 99% of us out there, we have FOMO, fear of missing out. And we feel like just because Tim's fucking eating it, maybe I should eat it too. That looks tasty, I'll have some too. And I get it, calories in versus calories out. But if you go to Macca's with 500 calories remaining in your day, you're literally gonna get a cheeseburger. A cheeseburger and a fucking water. Maybe a sparkling water at that. It's just not gonna happen. You're gonna feel unsatisfied and you're gonna want more. That's what McDonald's is all about. That's what all fast food is about. The shrinking food in your stomach just wants you to eat some more. Just wants you to get that extra chicken nugget. Wants you to get that upgrade to large. Now you come for this video for help. I'm gonna give you three tips. It's gonna make willpower so much easier. Number one, eliminating temptation. Now, temptation for most people, and this will be more direct to the people who are looking at being on a calorie deficit or eating towards a diet, but also can kind of pay um, a bit of respect to people who work at home as well. So, you're on a calorie deficit, temptation is definitely one of the hardest things to, I guess, avoid. You know, you're at work, there's a fucking office like bowl full of M&Ms, you're at the fucking gym, there's all these different protein shakes and pre-workouts and shit you just don't need. Uh, you're at home and everyone's eating fucking twice as much as you're eating and your portion servings are like small as shit and you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna starve to death. So there's always temptation around. Now, especially when you're at home, the easiest thing to do is find whatever's fucking your Achilles heel. Most people, it's things like chocolates, cookies, things that they can go to for a nice quick snack. For you, what you need to do is either cover that cookie jar or move into a place that you can't reach it. Um, better yet is just don't buy fucking cookies, but I know that just isn't sustainable for people. So move it to a place that makes it really hard for you to get. Limit yourself to how many you can have a day. Make it to a point where you're able to limit the amount of uh, excess um, temptation that you have in your life. 
you know, temptation is going to be a huge part. You know, you walk down the street, you'll be like, fuck, I could go for Maccas right now. I'm a bit hungry. Or you go to the shops and you'll be like, look, I'm a bit hungry. I'm going to buy with my stomach, not actually what I need. So eliminating the temptation there and then creating things like lists when you go shopping and forcing yourself to shop on the outside of the shopping center will be the key to eliminating temptation. Number two is priorities. Now, I already spoke about a video about priorities and setting a priority. So check that one out if you want a full video and just the how to's about that, but just gonna give you a really quick brief lowdown of what priorities are. So priorities are the most important things in your life. You should have a list of about three to five priorities, things that you would do. So let's say you came up with a like a crossroad decision, you had two things to decide on, and you just look at your list of priorities, be like, well, that one comes first, I'll do that one first. That should be what priorities are. Let's use this in the terms of willpower. Now, if your goal is to get a double under, we we'll use CrossFit as a great example. You go to the gym, you do the what of the day, awesome, you are finish the class, you got some spare time up your hand. Stop fucking talking. Go in the corner, practice your double unders for five to 10 minutes, get better at that skill you suck at. If you don't do that, you're just gonna fucking keep chatting to people and these are the same people who are just fucking freaks at everything. They'll pick up a skipping rope and be like, whoops, just did a triple under. <laughs> Practice, 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 practice. Make sure that you go and you do it. It's going to be hard. Willpower is, like I said, it's a muscle that you've got a limited amount of currency for, but if you make it a habit, it doesn't become a willpower. So making things habits, doing them for enough, 21 days makes a habit, 90 days makes a lifestyle, makes it super easy. And just be sure, if people are chatting, you're like, hey, yeah, I want to chat during my rest sets. I've got to do five to 10 minutes of double unders. I still can't do any under 10 minutes. I want to get better at them. Number three is being realistic. Having realistic goals in mind will not only create a better mindset for yourself, but it will allow you to easily commit to things better. Willpower, the key for willpower is committing and seeing achievement, progress, and results. Things like losing weight takes fucking time. Your first week you lose five to 10 kilos. Awesome, your next week you lose 0.5, if not anything at all. It can fluctuate to a multitude of reasons, but consistency is always key, they say. So the more consistent you're at a task, the easier it's gonna be, the better it's gonna get, and the less you're gonna worry about losing weight, the more you're gonna focus on the process, which is the key. Being realistic with your goals will make that whole process so much easier. Let's look at an example of if you have a 100 kilo squat goal in mind. Your current squat is 50 kilos, it ain't gonna happen overnight. Only if your current squat is just full of shit, you're not gonna PB 50 kilos. It's gonna be slow progression. 52 and a half, 55, 57 and a half. Set your long-term goal to be 100 kilos, but your short-term goal just to be more than 50. That way, as you progressively get closer to that long-term goal, you're gonna start being more motivated. It will be less effort for you to get into the gym and do that squat program, progressive overload that you have been doing because you can see slow improvement. If you have a roll of paper towel, you take off one piece every day, you're not gonna notice it go down for quite a while. It's the same with your body. Why do people expect something to happen straight away? We're humans. I guess we've got that, that mindset that, you know, if it doesn't happen now, it's not going to ever happen. So just make sure you set realistic goals, things that you can chip away at, things that will allow you to enjoy the process and not worry about that end goal until you get closer to it, until you start to get to that point. Having that end goal is awesome, but having a realistic outlook on goals is going to make your commitment and your willpower a whole lot better. Fuck me. What a rant. Willpower is one of those things that people just underestimate. Everyone's talking about how to get bigger, stronger, faster, fitter, and eat better, but no one's ever talking about how to do it with your mind. So stick in, make sure willpower is gonna be your thing. Make sure you set yourself realistic goals. Stop hanging out with people called Tim, who are anorexic cunts, who fucking are just genetically gifted in everything they can. Prioritize your goals, have realistic goals, and finally eliminate any form of temptation. Love the video, subscribe to the channel. Stay a beast, motherfuckers.